Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about 8 of the best weapons on Forged in Fire. But before we go on to that, if you end up liking this video, let us know by leaving a like and subscribing. It helps us out a lot and it lets us know you want to see more content like this. So without any further ado, let's get on to the video. Number 1. Kopesh The rope, my blade barely nicked it, but I'll take 2 out of 3. Well Salem, it definitely is easy enough to- one of the most influential of the early swords that arose during the Bronze Age, the Kopesh was an ancient Egyptian weapon that featured a hooked blade sharpened on its outside edge. Sickle-shaped swords were typically cast from bronze and were believed to have made their way to Egypt via the Middle East. During the New Kingdom period, they became common military weapons and were prized for their gruesome slashing ability in close quarters combat. The Kopesh also came to have ceremonial value, and was often depicted in art or included in the tombs of prominent Egyptians. The boy pharaoh Tutankhamun, for example, was entombed with two sickle swords of different sizes. The Kopesh was eventually abandoned in favor of more traditional swords around the 12th century BC, but not before it had become one of the most iconic weapons of ancient Egypt. Pretty good. I'm a little nervous, but mostly I'm just excited to see him, you know, go berserk with this thing. Number two, Kukri. How you feeling, bud? I'm pretty nervous. I feel like I'm on the chopping block. All right, judges. For centuries, this short, inwardly curved blade had been a traditional tool and weapon in Nepal. Europeans first became fascinated with the Kukri in the early 1800s, when the forces of the British East India Trading Company clashed with Nepalese Gurkha warriors in a bloody war. The locals' prowess with the blades, including their ability to lop off limbs or disembowel a horse with a single blow, persuaded the British to enlist them as a volunteer troop in their army. The Gurkhas went on to establish themselves as one of the world's toughest military units, and their service knives became prized for their distinctive shape, balanced blades, and superior chopping and slashing power. To this day, the Kukri remains a standard-issue Gurkha weapon and serves as the emblem of Britain's Brigade of Gurkhas, which consists entirely of Nepalese recruits. Let's begin with Josh's blade. Why don't you go ahead and start, Jay? Uh, Josh gave us a really nice piece. I mean, it's a bit rough, but he gave us a multi-steel. Number three, the Falcata. Kind of did the same type of thing. the same thing. Okay, judges, our bladesmiths have turned in their Falcatas. We've seen them perform in the test, now it's time to take a closer look at our sword. The Falcata was a curved, two-foot-long sword that was used by Celtiberian warriors in ancient Spain. Crafted from high-quality iron or steel, its distinctive blade was single-edged near the hilt and double-edged near the point. It was designed to combine the chopping power of an axe with the slashing ability of a sword. The Falcata is most famously associated with the Carthaginian general Hannibal, who equipped his African troops with it during the Punic Wars against Rome. According to some historians, the sword's effectiveness in close combat may have played a role in Hannibal's crushing victory over the Romans at 216 BC's Battle of Cannae. Let's work. We're going to start with Justin's Falcata. Doug, what do you think? Justin turned in a nice looking Falcata with a shape over there. Performance wise, during. Number 4. Ulfbert's Sword. Good job. Definitely a sharp weapon. It felt good cutting. Nicely done, Gabe. Thank you. All right, Clarence, your turn. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Beginning in the 8th century AD, the Vikings terrorized Europe with their ferocious raids on coastal settlements and cities. While only a few of the Scandinavian marauders carried swords, evidence shows that those who did often possessed finely crafted blades that were centuries ahead of their time. These Ulfbert swords, named the signature present on each of their blades, were forged from high carbon crucible steel and were renowned for their superior strength, flexibility, and sharpness. Some 170 Ulfberts dating from around 800 to 1000 AD have been recovered from archaeological sites, but since blades of similar quality did not reappear in Europe until the Industrial Revolution, their origins have been the subject of considerable scholarly debate. Some historians suggest that the Ulfberts were made from steel imported from the Islamic world. There, metalworking was more advanced. Others, however, contend that they were forged from an ore deposit located in Germany. Number 5. Bolo Knife All right. The Bolo Knife was originally an all-purpose tool for clearing brush or harvesting crops, but in the hands of revolutionaries, it became a formidable weapon of war. 
The machete-like blades originated in the Philippines, where native guerrillas used them as improvised arms in the Philippine Revolution, the Spanish-American War, and the Philippine-American War. Despite being severely outgunned, these bolo men often use their knives to gruesome effect. Their principal weapon is the long, broad-bladed, vicious-looking knife called the bolo. This is a quote from the American serviceman named Ira L. Reeves, who once wrote of the Filipinos, They make many boasts of their prowess and skills in taking human life, and one of their proudest feats is to sever the head from the body with a single blow. The fearsome blades later saw action during World War II, and they remain a common weapon in Filipino martial arts. Number 6. Katana Bladesmiths, a Hanzo's katana's first duty is to kill. All right, Mike, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Few images from Japan's medieval history are more iconic than that of the lone swordsman holding a gleaming katana. For centuries, these curved, single-edged blades were the preferred weapons of the samurai, the noble warriors who served Japan's feudal lords and followed a strict code known as Bushido. The best samurai were renowned for their ability to cut down enemies in a single, lightning-fast strike, and their swords were often revered as if they were precious works of art. Perhaps the most famous samurai sword was the Honjo Masamune, an early precursor of the katana that was forged in the 13th or 14th century by the legendary swordsmith Goro Nyuto Masamune. Hailed as one of the most exquisite Japanese blades ever crafted, the sword was owned by the 16th century warrior Honjo Shigenaga, and later passed through several hands before disappearing at the end of World War II, possibly after being stolen by an American serviceman. Despite repeated searches, the treasured national artifact has never been found. Also, on the edge right here, you took some chipping. But overall, looking at the dummy, I think your weapon will definitely Number 7. The Bowie Knife When I seen that they was going to be hammering through that piece of steel, I'm thinking that handle... American history's most iconic survival knife was named for Jim Bowie, the pugnacious frontiersman who became a leading figure in the Texas Revolution prior to his death at the 1836's Battle of the Alamo. Bowie's reputation as a knife fighter had been forged nearly a decade earlier in 1927, when he killed a man during a brawl on a sandbar near Natchez, Mississippi. The weapon he used was most likely a thick butcher's knife, but once word of the duel spread throughout the United States, many pioneers commissioned their own Bowies from blacksmiths. The knives soon developed a distinct look that included a 9 to 15 inch blade and a clip point, and they became all the rage on the frontier, where they were used for everything from skinning animals to chopping wood to barroom brawls. There were even special schools dedicated to teaching the art of fighting with the bowie. The blades later fell out of fashion as combat weapons after the introduction of more reliable pistols, but they continue to be used as hunting and utility knives to this day. About what your blades do to that bag. Dwight, you're up first. I'm ready to go for it. Along the cutting edge, I wasn't sure I had my knife really, really sharp. Number 8. The Roman Gladius Perhaps more than any other weapon, the gladius helped make the Roman Empire. The gladius helped make the Roman Empire. Along with the pilum, which is a spear, and the scutum, which is a shield, this two-foot double-edged short sword was one of the primary arms of the legions that conquered the Mediterranean basin. Its design evolved over centuries, but it typically featured a sharpened point and a firm, reliable blade forged from high-grade steel. Primarily a stabbing weapon, the gladius was at its most effective when used within a disciplined formation where troops could protect themselves with shields while making vicious thrusting attacks at the enemy. Historians Richard A. Gabriel and Karen S. Metz wrote, In the hands of the highly trained Roman legionnaire, this was the most deadly of all weapons produced by ancient armies, and it killed more soldiers than any other weapon in history until the invention of the gun. That is the end of the video. If you enjoy Forged in Fire or if there are any weapons that you enjoyed that we missed, let us know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to let us know. It also lets us know you want to see more content like this. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.